Hi everybody. Uh, today I want to do a video that I've been planning to do for a while. Uh, it's a Q&A, question and answer, because I, I get a lot of questions on uh, social media, Instagram in particular, and I wanted to, I've been wanting to answer them for a while. Um, I do try to answer as they go. Uh, I get a lot of people asking the same questions over and over and over, and I try my best to answer them, even though um, I do answer them a lot. Um, but I, I thought that uh, if I did a video with everything in it, maybe this would be a good place for people to come and see if I've answered the question that they have. So um, these are in no particular order. These are just things that people have asked me, in many cases, over and over and over again. Uh, so the first one is, how often do you draw? Well, the answer to that is pretty simply every day. I draw all the time, uh, whenever I can. I would say that in an average year, um, there's probably only 10 or 12 days in a whole year that I don't draw. Even even something like Christmas Day, if there's a spare moment, I probably have a sketchbook out and I'm drawing in the corner. Um, I just love to draw, right? Um, some days it's I'm working on something major like a, a pastel portrait, a commission, whatever. Sometimes it's just doodling in a sketchbook. Uh, sometimes it's just doodling on the side of an envelope, whatever. But it's all practice. It's all good, and it's all, it's you know, it's everything. It's it's enjoyment. It's stress relief. It's it's all that sort of fun stuff. So the answer is I draw all the time. If I'm not moving, I'm probably drawing. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think that there's no question that that this foundation, any foundation, any, any art is going to be built on drawing. Uh, when Picasso was was commissioned to do uh, Guernica, he there was a I remember reading a book in when I was at university, and he it was a book of all the sketches that he did just for that one painting. And it was something like 2,200 sketches just for the one painting. A lot of them were very quick, you know, bowls and different shapes and horses and what the, this painting was going to become. But you could see how it was just constantly drawing, drawing, drawing. And, uh, you, you know, a lot can be learned from that. Uh, one of the questions I get is, did I go to art school? Yes, I did. I went to, um, Actually, a few different places. I when my when I was in high school, my dad decided that he wanted to do his PhD in architecture, and at the time there were very few places that offered that program. And one of them was at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. So we moved there, and I took a number of courses at the uh, the Milwaukee Art Museum. It was actually a really great art museum. Um, I also managed to take some courses at the Art Institute of Chicago, which was really cool. And then when we came back to Canada, I went to University of British Columbia for one year. Uh, I was in the art program, but it turned out that it was a little bit more uh, theoretical than practical. So I left there and then I did my four year program at the Alberta College of Art and Design, which is out now actually just been renamed to the University of Arts, Alberta University of the Arts, I think, is in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I majored in visual communications, which is graphic design and illustration. Um, honestly, though, I think that uh, going to art school is great if you can, it gives you a great foundation. It teaches you good habits, which is really, really important. It teaches you to draw a lot, right? So if you look at that first question that I answered, like that stemmed from art school. We constantly, we had assignments all the time, but we also constantly had to, depending on the course, but we, a lot of them, we had to bring in our sketchbook every week or every two weeks and then teacher would thumb through it. And, you know, generally the, there wasn't really a lot of grading or anything on the sketchbook, but it, they wanted to see that you were constantly drawing Right. And because you're building habits and uh, it's also nice for exposing you to a lot of different types of medium. Um, I now mostly, if I'm going to do color, I almost always work in pastel. And that came directly from art school. It was, we had to do a project, we had to do a pastel uh, piece. I did it, put it away, never thought about it, didn't like it, actually didn't like using pastels originally. And then, lo and behold, 10 or 15 years later, I was like, I, I needed to do a piece in a hurry. And I thought, you know, I really, 
I really think the pastel would work for something like this. And I pull out the pastels and that's it. I haven't done anything since really um, in color. I, I haven't done an acrylic since then. I haven't done a, an oil since then. I just love the way the pastel works, but it's only because I'm ready for it now. And I wasn't then, but I was exposed to it at art school. Um, who are your influences and inspirations? Um, so the great Milton Glaser, um, who you may know was a, is an illustrator, just a phenomenal illustrator, um, iconic images like the Bob Dylan, uh, with the crazy electrical wires from the sixties. Uh, he once said that you should, and I'm paraphrasing here, try to see influence in creative sources that are unrelated to your work. So what Milton theorized was that if you are a painter and you look at paintings for inspiration, whether you mean to or not, subconsciously, you're going to start emulating that paint that that person right you're going to start painting like that person so rather than look at paintings for influence if you're a painter go listen to music go watch a film go whatever right um so i've tried to apply that myself i i look at other artists work i love art, looking at other artists work but when i'm really seeking inspiration I try to look at other things, um, even if it's just a different medium, right? If you're a painter and you look at, you know, say Richard McDonald's sculptures, uh, brilliant sculptures, then you're probably going to find that you can get some inspiration, but you're not going to be so easily able to mimic that style, which is ultimately not what you want to do, right? You want to you approach these things with your own style and your own way of doing things. Um, now that said, here are some of my favorites, um, sort of all time favorite artists, uh, John Singer Sargent, it's gotta be up there. Uh, you know, one of the great portrait artists of all time. Uh, Joaquin Sorella, who is also a great painter. Uh, Jacques Louis David, Caravaggio. Um, yeah, I mean, if you see a trend there, they're almost all portrait painters, right? Um, living, there are a number of of great artists out there. Um, Jamie Lipking is definitely one of them. Uh, Drew Struzan, who you know from all the movie posters. David Casson. There's just so many great artists. It's hard for me to uh, to, to list them all, certainly, but um, those are a few. Uh, so someone asked, it seems like you do a lot of drawings all at once. How many do you usually work on simultaneously? So wildlife painter extraordinaire Robert Bateman once said that, and again, paraphrasing, because I didn't take the time to look it up, but he said essentially that the first 10% of a piece of work is, you know, pure joy. And the last 10% is exhilaration. But the 80% in between is just plain old work. And I tend to agree with that. Um, I love starting a piece because, you know, you've got the energy of, doing something new and trying to see your vision come to life. I love finishing a piece because it has finally come to life. And that vision that you had in your head, if it was successful, you know, is right there on the page, but everything in between, I mean, you know, drawing hair over and over and over and erasing things and sculpting basically with a pencil, it, it's tedious. It can, it can be tedious. I mean, I, I still enjoy it. I love to do it. Um, but yeah, the, the in-between stuff can get a bit boring. So for that reason, I quite often have, um, I'm just going to look across my studio. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about, about nine pastel paintings on the go. And I have about 12 uh, sketchbooks going with with uh, my graphite portraits. So that's, that's probably pretty typical. I, I would say that I have anywhere from five to 10 drawings and yeah, five to 10 paintings at any given time. Um, and they're in all in various different states. Like I have some of my pastels are almost complete or may even be complete. I, I often will put them aside for a little while before I'm sure, before I tell the client, okay, it's done. Um, and other ones are, you know, maybe only an hour or two into them at this stage. So, um, and I apologize if I sound a little nasally, I just was having an allergy attack. Uh, so the reactant seems to be kicking in. Uh, okay. So one I get a lot is how can I get better at drawing? Well, <laughs> um, you know, taking courses, reading books, watching videos, they're all good, right? They're all going to help you, but really there is no substitute to 
putting in the hours, right? You have to draw. And I would basically say that drawing anything is going to help you. Um, you know, certainly going to courses or watching uh, courses or whatever, reading books, those will all help you to a degree. Um, they may teach you what to look for, what to try and use in your drawings, but I really just get a sketchbook, go outside, draw. And, you know, it, like it, it seems like a, a simple answer or I'm just trying to shrug it off, but it, it really is what it is, right? Like if, if you were learning to play guitar, there's no like, tricks. Like you just got to keep playing the guitar over and over and over again until you get better. Um, you're training, you're training two parts of your body, right? You're training your hand to do what your eyes see, but more importantly, you're, much more importantly, really, you're training your eyes to see things that other people don't see. And, you know, if you read in a book or you go to a course or you go to a demo, people will show you, okay, this is what I'm looking at. But you're, you're still, even though you understand, okay, that's why this person was able to do this. It's still not going to do anything for you if you can't apply that yourself, right? So drawing, 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 drawing. That's that's really it. Uh, what pencils do you use? That is probably the number one question that I get. <laughs> and um, it, I don't want to say it's frustrating because honestly, if, if anyone takes the time to ask me a question, you know, I appreciate it, right? I appreciate that you're interested. appreciate that you want to get better, that you want whatever you want advice i get that but it is frustrating because it, it it seems like people are looking for the easy answer right but like oh i'm not using the right pencil so that's why uh, my art's not as good no it really doesn't matter um a lot of my drawings are done with one of these guys this is a hb norica school grade pencil okay and this is probably a 25 cent pencil this is an ebony. This is probably a $2 pencil. They do, they work equally as well. They're both good. The difference is the ebony is a little bit darker. So, you know, whether you're using an HB or a 4B or an 8B, you know, that makes a difference. But the actual quality of the pencils doesn't make any difference. Okay, graphite is graphite. Um, what you may notice if you went to the grocery store, for example, and you bought pencils, you may notice that when you sharpen them, the lead's not, you know, it's, it's not centered in the wood and it's actually graphite. It's not lead, but we still call it that. But you may notice that it's not centered in the wood because a poor quality pencil often is not, it doesn't go through the same quality control as a two or $3 pencil. But other than that, they're the same. Graphite is very, very cheap. So it's not like they have to scrimp to make cheap pencils or, or use really expensive graphite to make good ones. They're, they're the same. So stop worrying about what pencils I use and just go buy some pencils, right? Just use your pencils. There's no magic pencils. They're all the same. Um, but the one, the one thing that I do quite often answer is my charcoal. I use a white charcoal. It is a general's white charcoal. Um, I believe there are other brands that make white charcoal. It's, it's, it's actually not charcoal. Um, so it's a bit of a misnomer. It is a, I think it's a clay and something. Oh, there's about six different binders in it. I, I remember um, reading about it, but G Generals is the leader in North America. Anyway, I'm sure there are other brands around the world. Um, and it, it, it's called white charcoal because it works well with charcoal. It feels like charcoal, but it's not charcoal. Um, and so I will always answer, yes, I use Generals because it's the only brand I can find. I mean, and I'm happy with it. If there was another brand came on, I probably wouldn't, unless it was way cheaper, I probably wouldn't try it because it's all good. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, honestly... That's about it. Um, I will. I will say, having said that, the brands don't really matter. There is one brand that I do look for when it comes to a really dark pencil, and that is um, when I want an eight B. So that is the darkest of the dark that I use, eight B. Um, trying to see if I've got one here. That's yeah. 
I use a generals, generals again, woodless. Uh, that's only the end of it, uh, 8B. Let's see if I've got one over here that's that's brand new. Is it, again, and I've talked about these in other, in other um, videos, but these pencil extenders are invaluable because you can use pencil right down to a nub, which is nice. Uh, I have... Yeah, Generals Woodless looks like that. Generals Woodless 8B. This is the darkest pencil I've ever found. Um, there are other brands that have 8B. It seems like the Generals 8B. And I, I don't know if I've ever used their wooded pencil or if they even make one. But the Woodless, it, it does what I want. So that's what I normally get. Um, it is the darkest pencil that I've found in graphite. Um, there are other things like the Mars, um, Staler Mars Lumograph Black, they look kind of like this, um, that are probably as dark, if not darker, but they've got a lot of carbon in them, carbon in them. So if you use them exclusively in a drawing, they work well, but if you mix them with other graphite, you're going to see some sort of strange patchiness. So even though that is a darker pencil, it doesn't work as well with what, how I draw. So bear that in mind. What paper do you use? So I have tried religiously for the last two or three years, whenever I post anywhere on any social media to explain what the paper is that I use. Um, I probably 90% of the time, maybe more, use a toned paper. I, I really like toned paper. It's just fun for me when I do my sketches. Um, I do lots of commissions on white paper as well. People, it depends on what people want, right? I'm open to using whatever they want, and it also depends on the reference that I'm working with. Um, but I've been really, really conscious about putting that in in every every um, post because unlike pencils, which you know, pencils are pencils, graphite is graphite. When it comes to paper, there's a huge difference, and uh, good quality paper from Strathmore, uh, Canson. Stillman and Byrne is a is a new company that I really like. Um, Legion Paper, Stonehenge. There's a number of these different papers that are really really nice paper. If you go to, you know, the grocery store or Walmart or wherever, and you get a and you get a pad of paper that isn't particularly good, your work will suffer. Okay, so if you're going to spend money anywhere, do it on the paper. Um, I would honestly, I'd say, go to, you know, a stationery store and buy. Um, you know, these kinds of things by the box. This is a student grade HB pencil. You can buy probably a box of this for about eight bucks or less. Maybe get a couple of, you know, generals, eight B's or a couple of ebony's or something like that. And then, um, spend your money on the paper. Don't, don't spend a lot of money on the pencils. Okay. The, the paper will make a big difference. <laughs> How long do your drawings take? So if you haven't already seen it, take a look at my story time video on Picasso um, on my YouTube here. And that explains really how I would answer that, right? My drawings take about 30 years because <laughs> um, that's how long it took me to get to the stage. Now, in, in actual technical terms from the blank paper to the finished drawing, uh, if it's a graphite um, or charcoal drawing, it's probably about three to four hours, sometimes a little less. If if I'm drawing, you know, the rock who's bald, it might only be a two or two and a half hour drawing. If I'm drawing someone with a lot of hair, then it might be a three or four hour drawing if there's a lot of detail or whatever, right? So th there's sort of a range in there. It's just, I, I don't know that I've done any um, drawings in graphite or charcoal recently that have taken me more than, say, four hours. Um, my pastel paintings certainly take a lot longer, uh, depending upon how big they are, 8, 10, 20 hours, right? So, and, and the amount of detail, so. Uh, do you draw normal people? So I assume by that question is, do I draw people that are not famous? Yes, I do. Um, the vast majority of my commissions, probably 80% of my commissions, are of non-famous people. Right, um, I do get commissioned by celebrities quite a bit, but I the the bread and butter. Most of my income comes from drawing normal people. So, 
yeah, if you're interested in commissioning me, send me an email. Um, I believe there's a link straight on my YouTube here, but if not, go to my website. There's a, definitely a link to my website and uh, use the uh, contact form there and um, send, me a, send me a note and I'll give you my pricing. Um, I don't draw people for free. Um, you know, I, I do get probably 20 people a week asking me to draw them for free or expecting that I'm going to draw them for free, which always sort of surprises me because, you know, do you go into a restaurant and ask for a meal for free or do you go into a store and ask for a pair of pants for free? I mean, this is how I pay my bills and I'm not drawing you for free. <laughs> Sorry. Um, why do you draw so many celebrities? That's a question that I get asked sometimes. Not very often, though. Um... So the single most important thing or the single most important feature of a portrait is does it look like the person that is in the portrait, right? You could draw the most beautiful or paint the most beautiful painting and people would say, oh, that's phenomenal. But if it doesn't look like the person that you're trying to paint, then it's failed, right? Now, if you don't get me wrong, if you're just doing a portrait of a person, right, and you don't care, and sometimes when I do some of my gallery pieces or whatever, I don't necessarily care. I will, I will often start off with a model, but I might, it might deviate, and sometimes I'm okay with that. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll bring back the likeness, and other times I'll say, man, it doesn't matter that it doesn't look like this person because it's not what I'm going for. But if we're talking about an actual portrait, if someone commissions me and says, I want a portrait of my daughter, or I want a portrait of my wife, or I want a portrait of my nephew, it has to look like that person, right? It's, it's crucial because it doesn't matter how good it is. If it doesn't look like that person, then it's a failure, right? We don't want a picture that goes on the wall. It doesn't look like the person that I want it to look like, right? So bearing that in mind, um, you know, I could put up a hundred paintings on my on my social media or on my website or wherever trying to get commissions, but if they're of non-famous people, you're never going to know whether I can do a likeness, right? Um, so there's really there's no better way to prove that you can draw a likeness than to draw famous people, right? Because people know what they're supposed to look like, and we know them really well because we've seen them so often. So there's just, there's no better way um, to prove my ability to capture a likeness than to draw celebrities. So that's why I do it. Um, I continue to do it. Originally, it wasn't supposed to go for this long. It was, I was going to do only a dozen or, you know, 20 uh, celebrity drawings. But I think that my fifth or sixth drawing that I did was of Ewan McGregor. And I did this drawing one evening and I posted it on Twitter and I went to bed. And I woke up the next morning and I had 600 emails and there was like a dozen commission inquiries. Uh, most of the emails were, were, you know, notifications, but that was, that was a shock to me. And I thought, wow, this is kind of interesting. And of course, the reason that I got all those was because you and McGregor himself had reposted it. Um, and so from there, it's just led to a tremendous amount of opportunities and really that's why I continue to do it. It's fun, right? I mean, spend a couple of hours. Often I don't feel like working on commission or I don't I don't want to work on something really serious or hardcore. I want to work on something really fun and easy. And so I'll pull out one of my dozen sketchbooks that I'm working on. And I'll work on that for a couple of hours. Um, and that's why it's hard for me sometimes to know how long a painting took because I, I don't pay attention, right? I work on it for half an hour and then I put it away and go back to my commissions are working on it for an hour or two or whatever. So a lot of times I don't really know how long I've taken. They're, they're generally about two or three hours, right? They're, they're often in a lot of different parts. I didn't, I almost never sit down, start a drawing and finish it. Almost never when it comes to a celebrity piece. Um, so, and then along the same lines, do you sell your celebrity pieces? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Um, I know that there are a lot of um, people who sell fan art. Um, those are mostly hobbyists, so people that are not professional artists. As a professional artist, I just can't do it. Um, it's just not a legal gamble that I want to take. So these are totally for fun. Don't sell them. Don't sell prints of them. It's just, it's just for fun. Uh, you know, I put them up there on Instagram and stuff for people to enjoy, and I hope that you do. Um, they're great also as tools. When I do videos or I do demos, I'll often 
um, do celebrities because again I can show you know I can I can take a picture of a of a, one of my models right and I can put it up and I can say okay now we're gonna draw that but it's even though you're looking at that picture it's still hard for you to say okay does it really look like that picture because we're just looking at one instance of them whereas if I put up a picture of you know Jackie Chan and everybody knows what Jackie Chan looks like and now we're doing the demo then it then it makes sense and, and it's easier for people to sort of relate to that and understand that um, and I think that's it for the questions right now. Um, yeah, so hopefully those have answered most of the questions that you might have for me. If you have more, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, I will continue to do this, and I have a couple more um, demos in my head. I, I actually have a list of about 10 paintings or 10 um, videos that I want to do, so I'll try to get to that over the next little while, and hopefully, you guys. Um, We'll find those interesting, and please, uh, yeah, give me any comments, questions, whatever you have down below. Do my best to answer them, and uh, until next time, keep drawing.